Today I'm checking out this 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter that I picked up off Amazon. This one is a 12 volt to 120 volt inverter. So it takes 12 volt power from like a battery or whatever, and it converts it into 120 volt pure sine wave electricity. So you can run 110, 120 volt appliances and so forth. So we're gonna be using this in our RV. It does have a remote, so this plugs in to the side of the inverter, so you can turn the inverter on and off, and it just gives you some basic status of the inverter. It comes with three sets of screws and anchors. Two of those are to anchor this in, and one of those is to anchor this in. And some four gauge wires for the terminals that are here underneath this side of the inverter, and then these would hook to your battery or whatever. Now, this inverter has a few things. One I like is it has these little rubberized feet here so that way if you are going to mount this somewhere and you don't want it you know getting all scratched up these are going to not only help you from scratching that up but they're also going to get rid of any of that little vibration that you may get from fans things like that so that's cool helps reduce the sound problems it does have a fan here and it has these little terminal covers with the screws underneath or the bolts and it has positive and negative on there and that's just for extra safety nice big fan then on this side, you have two areas here for the air to escape. It's going to blow all that air out of here, cooling off the inside. You've got two AC output outlets here. You've got a USB-A port and a USB-C port, a status screen right here that flips through different statuses, like it tells you how many uh, watts and so forth are pulling out, what the voltage is. This also has, you can flip between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. So I had it on 60 hertz. This is where the remote plugs in, and this is the ground connection where you would ground this inverter to, you know, like we're gonna put in the RV, I'll ground it to the chassis of the RV. And the bottom just has your, your specs and so forth, your serial number. Let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up to a battery and test it out. Lithium iron phosphate battery that I picked up off Amazon. It is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And we're gonna be using this in our RV. So I wanna do a good capacity test on it to see how well it holds the power that we put in and does it really get 100 amp hours or actually 1280 watt hours is the real reading that we would wanna look at. Now, some of the things on this one that I did notice is it has a charging current of 50 amps max, uh, which is fine, that's pretty standard. It does have a discharge current max of 120 amps. Now that's continuous, so that's actually 20% higher than most of the batteries in this price range. So that gives you, you know, 20% more power out of it. And the specs and so forth are all on here. It does come with this little environment protection insert that was in there. It has these two terminal covers for your wiring. And then it has the two bolts that need to go in here because it comes with these little plastic uh, caps like this to keep it from shorting out or you touching it with something accidentally. So it comes with two of those and then you would just put these bolts in there. So now it has what it needs for the terminals. But anyways, enough blabbing. Let me get this thing charged up and we're gonna do a capacity test. I've got this battery now fully charged. We're gonna be capacity testing this battery to make sure that we actually get the 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour amount of power, which should equal to 1280 watt hours. And we're also testing this 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter because I've got this hooked up to a portable AC unit. That portable AC unit is gonna be putting the load on the inverter, which is putting the load on the battery. So not only will we find out that does this battery actually have 1280 watt hours of capacity in it and can this inverter really do 1500 watts or more because it should be able to do 3000 watts peak and that is close to what this air conditioner pulls when it first kicks on i've seen it go all the way up to about 2.8 kilowatts which would be pushing it to the max of the peak and then when it's running the fan is around 80 watts and with the fan and compressor and everything running, it's anywhere from 500 up to 800 watts that it will draw, and that will put a good load on this inverter. We'll see how well the inverter handles it. So this battery monitor here is gonna be monitoring the power that's being pulled out of the battery. The inverter, of course, is gonna pull a little bit more power than that because there is some overhead in an inverter, but it should be pretty close to this, so we're just gonna see what kind of power we can get out of this battery. And to start this test off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn 
the inverter on. Now it's pulling 14.5 watts of power is what the battery monitor says. And that is also because the air conditioner is connected to this. So that is pulling a little bit of power and there's a little bit of power loss when it comes to running the inverter. All of that though is very normal and looks like it's within spec. So let's go ahead and turn this compressor on over here to get this thing started. And that compressor kicked on right from the start. It was able to handle that startup uh, pool of power with no problem. And as you can see, it's pulling around 480 watts, which is the compressor and the fan. And that's about as low as it is. Once the pressure and everything starts building up inside of the AC, this will slowly start to climb because the compressor is using more power to compress that. So I'm gonna let this thing run and we're just gonna see how well the inverter handles this and how much power we can get out of this battery. I'll be back when it's getting low. Two hours later. All right, so I have been keeping an eye on this and this inverter has done great. So when it comes to the 1500 watt inverter, it's been able to handle highs and lows. I've seen it running, you know, at 800 watts, things like that. Now I'm not pushing it at 1500 watts, you know, nonstop continuous. I haven't done that with this yet. And I may do that in another video, but when it comes to this, I'm pretty good with how it's been working. So I think this definitely is living up to its specs and I'm going to be using this in my RV. Now, when it comes to the battery, it is getting a little bit low. It actually was dipped down a little bit when the compressor was on and then the compressor kicked off just a minute ago and it voltage kind of recovered a little bit, which is very normal because of the load. But I'm expecting once that compressor kicks on again, it's either going to be pretty close to dropping out or it may not even be able to handle the jolt with the voltage that it has left. This is definitely getting toward the end of its capacity. I'm assuming that this battery is getting pretty low, maybe down to the last 5% or so of the battery. One thing I do wanna note though is, is when I first started this up and was testing this battery, the resting voltage was a little bit low. So I'm not sure this battery 100% charged all the way up with my charger. It may not have gotten a complete charge from my charger. I'm not really sure the charger just kicked off or what, but it did say full when I took it off. So there may be some extra capacity here that you can get out of this battery that a different charger may get all the way up. And I just wanted to put that note there because it does look like it's not gonna make it to the 100 amp hour mark, which again, most of these batteries are rated at like a very steady ampage draw and not a very high ampage draw at that either. Something around 15 or so amps would probably be what this would be pulled at. And of course this air conditioner has been running this thing over 50 amps for a long period of time. And the compressor has been kicking on and off a lot more because it did get this room pretty cold and it's, oh, there it went, it tried to kick off. As you can see, it was running for three hours and 19 minutes. There it is, which is a little longer than normal. But what I did notice, come on, there it goes. What I did notice is the compressor had actually gotten this room down to the temperature it was. So it was kicking it on and off. It's pretty chilly in the room right now. But anyways, this battery did get 1.13 kilowatt hours, which is 1,130 watt hours out of it, which is, you know, pretty close to what it's rated at and 94.7 amp hours. And again, like I said, when I first started this test, the resting voltage was a little bit lower than I'm used to seeing. So I have a feeling that my charger didn't give this a 100% of the charge that it needed. So I'm gonna test this out again. Personally, myself, if I continue to get less than 100 amp hours out of this, I'll let you know and I'll put that in the comments. But all in all, this did fine for me, this did well. I definitely think that for a economy or a less expensive battery, this did great. Definitely like the inverter also, great pair up, especially if you were wanting to run these two together, uh, this would make a good portable power station, you know, solar generator, whatever they wanna call it. Basically, uh, this power station would be charging up the battery and then being able to use it. All you would need for a solar power unit would be the solar charger. But I think both of these performed well, definitely within specs. And I definitely think that I can rely on both of these from what I've seen. And I'll be using these in our RV. I hope this information was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.